In this video, I'll walk you through how to create an event-driven Node.js app written in TypeScript. We will start with a traditional application and then take the steps needed to make our services loosely coupled by making them communicate through PubSub. We will look at how to create and manage infrastructure like PubSub, databases and Chrome jobs when working with your application locally, but also how to go about getting an event-driven application deployed to the cloud. Let's dive in. The application we will be looking at is an uptime monitoring system. And we have a list of websites to monitor and a cron job for checking every site and seeing if it's reachable or not. And our application will send a notification if any of the statuses change. So let's add a new site here and see what happens. So the status is unknown until the cron job has checked the status of the site. And this is one of the things we want to change when making our application event driven. Here we have two architectural diagrams and on the left side is our current system and on the right is how we want it to look like when we are done. You can see that we have four services, frontend, monitor, site and slack. And the filled in arrows indicate that the monitor service are calling endpoints in both the site and the slack service. So the monitor service has a hard dependency on these two services. We can also see that both the monitor and the site service has databases. The monitor service is the one that has the cron job which checks the status of each site once every hour. So we want to introduce a site.added topic that we can publish to from the site service whenever we add a new site. We will subscribe to the site.added topic in the monitor service and then ping the website to check the status when a new site is added. We also want to remove the hard dependency between the monitor and the Slack service by introducing an uptime transition topic. But before we continue, let's talk a bit about why it's a good idea to make these changes to our application. By making these changes, we make our services more loosely coupled, which almost always is a good idea. Now the monitor service doesn't even need to know that the Slack service exists and the site service can remain independent from the monitor service. The Slack service can be offline without affecting the monitor service. And then when it gets back online, it can just read from the event queue and pick up where it left off. Both the monitor and the Slack service are now dependent on an abstraction rather than on each other. And this is called dependency inversion. And this allows us to add or replace other notification channels like Discord or email without having to touch the monitor service at all. But making a system event driven is not always a good thing. And here are some of the things that you need to watch out for. It's not an all or nothing approach. Just use PubSub in places where it's a great fit. And there's no need to be dogmatic about this. Please don't be dogmatic. Simply replacing traditional API calls with events are not enough. There are essential concepts that you need to understand when working with asynchronous queues, particularly eventual consistency and item potency. Take the time to learn about these concepts. Trust me, you will thank me later. An event-driven system is more complex. You need to build more components and there are additional infrastructure requirements. And that's why using the right tools for the job is super duper important. Debugging problems and managing your environments will be really frustrating if you don't have the right tools. And that is why we will be using Encore.ts to build our event-driven application. Encore.ts is an open source framework that is specifically designed to make it easier to build robust and type-safe distributed systems with TypeScript, exactly like the event-driven backend we're going to build today. And it has a lot of built-in tools to make the development experience smoother, like a local development dashboard that we'll be taking a look at a bit later. But now let's look at some code. Here we have our four services. And from a code perspective, a service is just another folder in our repo when working with Encore. And you will most likely end up with a lot of services when building an event-driven application. So creating new services needs to be easy. This is one of the reasons why Encore is a great fit for this kind of application. Let's start by looking at the site service. This service has a few CRUD endpoints like add, get, delete, and list. We are interested in the get endpoint because we want to publish an event when a new site is added. Let's start to make our application event-driven by adding our site.added topic. 
And we do this by calling the topic class, specifying the type that we will be publishing on this topic, in this case, the site type, and we specify the delivery guarantee. Now, in the add endpoint, we can now call the dot publish method on the site added topic object. Notice here that using PubSub with Encore is type safe. You will get compile time errors if you publish to a topic with the incorrect parameters. Our architectural diagram now looks like this. We are publishing to the site.added topic, but we are not yet subscribing to it from the monitor service. So let's fix that now. So let's open the monitor service. Let's take a look at what's going on here before adding our subscriber. Here we have a check endpoint that checks and updates the status of a single site. And inside the API handler, we are calling the get endpoint in the site service. We import the service through the Encore slash clients folder, and then we can call the endpoint just like calling a regular function with complete type safety. But the coolest part is that under the hood, these function calls get converted to actual HTTP calls resulting in traces and logs. And this endpoint also calls the do check function. And this function pings the site to get the current status, fetches the previous status from the database, and if the status has changed, calls the Slack service with the new status, updates the site status in the database, and finally returns the status. And this looks like the function we want to call whenever a new site is added. So let's add our PubSub subscriber. And to do that, we call the subscription class, passing in the topic we want to subscribe to, the name of the subscription, and an options object. And in the options objects, we only need to specify the handler, the function that gets called for every new event. The do check function accepts a site, so there is no need to do anything more than this. But while we are here in this file, let's also check out how to create cron jobs and databases using Encore. Here is the cron job for updating the status of each site. We specify the time period and the endpoint to be called when the cron job runs. And this is everything you need for Encore to create a cron job in a deployed environment. And here is the code for creating our monitor database. We call the SQL database class, giving it a name and a path to our migrations folder. In the migrations folder, Encore expects ordinary SQL files. And this is what the checks table looks like. We can then use the returned object monitor DB in this case to insert into our database or query rows from the database. And if you don't want to write SQL by hand, Encore also supports ORMs like Drizzle and Nex. So how does this work? Well, Encore comes with local automatic infrastructure. When you start your Encore application locally using Encore Run, Encore automatically spins up all the infrastructure your app needs on your computer, including databases and PubSub. So you don't need to deal with writing YAML or setting up Docker Compose or other tools like LocalStack in order to run your local environment. So now that the app is running, we also get access to the local development dashboard. And from here, you can easily call your endpoints. Let's call the add endpoint in the site service. Each call to your application results in a trace that you can inspect to see the API request, database calls, and PubSub messages. Here you can see that we published a PubSub event. Let's follow the event and open that trace. Getting local tracing out of the box and being able to debug your application like this is another reason why Encore is a great choice for building an event-driven application. The local development dashboard also includes a service catalog with automatic API documentation. Oh, and by the way, the pretty architectural diagrams I've been showing you is Encore Flow, which is also built into the development dashboard. It's an always up-to-date representation of your system that changes in real time as you develop. So how would we go about deploying this application? You can build your application using Encore Build. You will get a Docker image that you can deploy anywhere you want. You will need to supply a runtime configuration where you can specify how the application should connect to the infrastructure like PubSub and databases. But if you don't feel like setting this stuff up manually, you can use Encore's cloud platform, which automates setting up the needed infrastructure in your cloud account on AWS or GCP. It comes with built-in CI CD, so you just need to push to deploy. 
And if you want to play around with this example yourself, you can easily do so by installing Encore description under the video and then run Encore app create in your terminal. Select TypeScript and then the uptime application in the list of starter templates. You will need to have Docker Desktop installed as that is needed to create databases locally. And when you have the code checked out, then you can also take a look at the uptime transition topic used by the Slack service. And that's it. There's a few links under the video that you can check out, one of which is to Encore's example repo with a bunch of deployable applications. Please leave a comment below if you have ideas for videos that you would like to see on this channel. See you.